If you are a current 360 booth operator or you're possibly thinking of jumping into the 360 booth industry, this video is made just for you. Now today I had the pleasure to collaborate with Mondo. Mondo's information is going to be in the description box below. We're jumping into Luma Booth today. Luma Booth is about $28 total a month which saves you a ton of money and as business operators we are trying to run as efficient as possible and save money wherever we can by being creative and being resourceful. So let's go ahead and jump into Luma Booth. Peace. Mondo, tell me a little bit about you, man. I am a native Floridian, born and raised, um, 35, have two kids. I am married uh, to my beautiful wife, high school sweethearts, been together for like 17 years. Um, I love it, and I love my life, dude. This was just like, starting this was just, I'm a, I used to be a musician, so this was kind of I had my kids. I kind of chose the family life over touring and all that stuff like that. Mm -hmm. um, so this was this has kind of been my outlet. This has kind of been my my way to kind of get that same kind of energy. Yep. Um, as you can see, I like to be visible. I like to I like I like to help people. I like to. Um, I'm just a people person. I just I, I like that's something I like to do. Okay. So family man, musician at heart, and you started your 360 booth business, or did you start off with the 360 photo booth, traditional photo booths, or how did this come about? No, just, uh, I just hopped on straight after doing my research, obviously, and watching a ton of your videos and a lot of the stuff out there. Um, I had heard about this uh, last year or the year prior. I had, you know, heard about the 360 um, but didn't jump on it right away. Wasn't there financially. Got laid off during the whole uh, pandemic thing, and kind of put things in perspective. I needed multiple sources of income, um, but I also wanted to do something that I could truly like feel like I was doing something that I loved and that was actually changing people's lives, um, even in the smallest way. People don't realize it the smallest way. Um, so that's why. I'd, decided to do it yeah and i can see that actions speak louder than words and i can see that you and your wife you guys stay busy your presentation is beautiful your videos are great so uh now we're uh, talking about video the content the production right so today's uh we're i'm collaborating here with mondo today because mondo's been using luma booth for quite some time and because mondo is i would say a veteran now when it comes to luma booth today mondo's going to be helping me set up luma booth I'm gonna go. At, I'm gonna. Ha I have my um, my 360 booth here, so we're gonna go ahead and do like a test run as well. And we're gonna that do all that. Sexy. Day. So let's let's rock it out, Mondo. I'm gonna go ahead and connect my phone to my laptop and then share my phone screen and jump onto the application. I haven't done anything okay. besides signed up, and then from okay. there, let's go ahead and rock it out. Let's go ahead and do that right now. Let's cool, see. Cool. So I have my I have mine as well. So I'll kind of follow along with you. Okay. Um, All right, Mondo. So here I am. I'm going to go ahead and open up Luma Booth right here. And so this is where I'm at right now. So if you guys are on Luma Booth for the very, very first time, it might look a little something like this. Uh, now, while I'm on this screen right now, what do you recommend I do next, Mondo? So the first thing you're going to do, so you've already, have you already created an event? No, I, I didn't create an event because I wanted to do everything from the, like from the very beginning so that anyone that's jumping onto Luma Booth for the very first time can kind of use this video as a tutorial on how to first set up a 360 booth event. Is that cool? Gotcha. Gotcha. So, um, you see this little, uh, drop down arrow that you have on the lower right hand corner. Right here. So yeah. Uh, click on that really quick. Sure. Um, so actually you're, let me move you out of the way. Um, that, are you on the, is this on the app or yeah. are you logged in on the website? No, it, it's on the app. So if I go to the top right where it says launch event, um, I, I can set up the event here. Am I correct? Uh, yeah. Mine actually looks a little different. That's why I was asking. Okay. Um, so because they're right under launch event there's there's a section that says um like where you create a new event um let me just check to see i see a lot of stuff in the way right quick so you're already in it this is basically how you would do 
whenever the people log in, they're going to see right in the launch event or that previous screen that you were just on. Okay. You'll see right underneath, they'll say launch event or new event. And that's where you would create your new event. I see. You, for some reason, don't have it. It's almost like as if it was already created for you. Okay. Um, but just so they know, um, that's right under that, without having doing the drop down or, or whatever, they'll have that new event icon right underneath that. Okay. Do you, uh, on your phone right now, Mondo, because you're using both a combination of your laptop and your phone right now, or are you just using your phone for this uh, Zoom call? Uh, right now, I'm just using my phone, my, my other phone for it. Can you, sh okay. Do you have the cable to share your screen on your phone? I do not. No, um, no, I just, just, uh, just asking. Okay, so cool. Launch event. Do you want me to go on launch event first, or should I, or should we explore some of these options here on the left side? Let's explore some options. So normally, when you do this, you wouldn't even have to um, go into any of those menus at the top. Okay. Um, so on this menu right here, so you can just minimize this screen, this little drop down right here. Okay. So uh, normally, you. Sometimes, you know, when you have touch fix, you created like a separate little um, screen for whenever you would uh, just a waiting screen for your sharing station and stuff like that. Yes. So this is kind of like where you would kind of adjust that. You see where it says uh, on the right hand side under under the tab background, it says select just so it doesn't look so simple. OK. So so for now, OK, so that's if you want to add like a background, like you said, like an oil. That's it. Yeah, that's if that, that's I was just letting people know that they have that option. They don't even they don't have to adjust that at all um they could just go with there's it gives you a few little theme options there and then you can change the font option to the right in the tab as well if you wanted to do that i see um so on this uh on that font tab to the right um so you see that sh show browse button mm -hmm. make sure that that is always checked so deselect it really quick so you can see what would happen you see how that upper right uh, upper left hand corner that little image yes it vanished it vanished right yeah that's the link to your gallery okay okay Thanks. so just make sure that's always checked you could always go back into the menu and you know during the event and and reselect it and turn it back on okay. um but just make sure just so you can uh, if you're doing steps this is one of the steps you want to make sure make sure that box is checked minus so uh, right, right here on this screen that where i'm at right now say the client says hey david i wanted to say uh happy birthday andrew this mm -hmm. section so, will, i'll go ahead and do that right yep you can actually select that kate and jack's wedding if you click on it you should be able to edit what it says ah okay Okay. Done. Okay. And yeah, then and you can change the you can change the date also um, underneath it. Okay. I'll just leave that as is. Now, is this the title to this event, or will this be on the overlay when I'm shooting the video? Yeah. This is this is basically your start screen. This is basically the screen your your standby screen that you would you know hit record on. Okay. Um, that's why I said it doesn't really matter, but if you wanted to, you know, make it, you know, do a little extra, you could do that. Mm -hmm. um, but it's not necessary. Um, so down at the bottom where it says print layout. Print layout. Um, print layout right here. Okay. Yep. Oh, you, I don't know if you went. Did you go two screens? Oh, no, no, that's fine. That's fine. That's, ex that's exactly where you need to be. So you don't need this. This is for photos, obviously. If you have that option, this is where you would adjust it. So you can hit next to the next screen. All right. So next screen would be capture mode. Uh, down at the bottom, um, where it says the capture mode. This right here, capture mode. There you go. Can you see my full screen on your end, uh, uh, <laughs> No, that's why I keep like I can't. Okay, okay. I, now I can see it. Now I can see it. Yeah, that's what I figured. I, I figured I moved some stuff out of the way. So right now you can see the full top and the bottom where it says capture mode on your end. Yeah, I can see it now. Excellent. All right, let's go ahead and select capture mode. Yep. So I normally just to avoid me hitting any other button okay. um, because you know in the middle of the van it's loud. Sometimes it's you know it could be kind of dark or whatever. You may hit another button. I deselect photo, uh, GIF, and video, okay. and just leave the uh, Boomerang 360 selected. All right. That way it's the only button that's on there. Um, so go to the next option, uh, next menu, capture settings. All righty. 
so this is the meat and the potatoes right here this is where um basically where your settings are um so you would scroll up to the boomerang 360 option got it so this is where you that first option you have your your countdown okay i think you usually do three seconds on yours right usually when i'm touch picks however uh boomer um so i'm sorry luma biff luma what the heck is luma biff i don't know maybe it's a new app but for luma Boo, we need to work on it let's get on it <laughs> for luma Boo, the five second I i'll leave it as is unless you instruct me to do otherwise so uh, i leave it at five okay i'll leave, I'll it, leave at it at five, five as well yeah and do you normally use the uh, motion trigger on, yeah. on when you touch picks? Okay, so this one is a tad bit more sensitive, okay. but it does allow you to cal calibrate it. Um, just be advised. So I'll just let you know, I ended up with a ton of just footage just from me, like moving the arm. So it's very yeah. sensitive. Okay. Yeah, so just bear in mind that you may have to adjust that. Um, I don't actually use it anymore just for that reason. Okay. Um, it's just an extra step. Quality, obviously, you know, drag that thing all the way to the right. So let, let's nice go ahead and, uh, as far as quality goes, I just moved it to uh, eight megabytes per second. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually, for your events, your videos look really great. You usually Thank have you. it at the eight megabytes per second, the yeah. highest quality possible. Yes. Okay. Yes. All right. Um, and I usually run the rectangle because I, you know, I kind of like to see more of the the body of the the guest on the uh, platform. Okay. And uh, rectangle. Square, square looks nice. The rectangle, uh, Mondo, is going to be vertical or horizontal. It's it's vertical this way. Beautiful. Okay. Yeah. It's you still get enough of the of the left and right of the platform, uh -huh. but it's it. I like that look better. But you can mess with it on your end. This uh -huh. is where you would display the text before you're recording. You don't. That doesn't really matter. You can leave that the way it is. You don't have to mess with that. Okay. Uh, make sure that the reverse um, is checked. Okay. It should be automatically when you set up the events, but just make sure you don't you didn't click it by mistake or something like that. All right. Um. So recording duration. Right now, I am. Let me see what I did on my last. My last one was actually my favorite um, length. So let me just see. Let me see what I did for that one. Of course. So for that one, I did, I did 10 seconds. Um, so I'm moving the, the so, all right, so for people uh, that are watching, I'm going to go ahead and move this and until it equals 10 seconds. Is that right, Mondo? Yes. So, okay, all right, so I'm going to go ahead and move this in this direction. Yes. And we're going to get to 10 seconds right there. Okay. Yep. Um, so the section right below it, you see where the little turtle is? Yes. So this is a speed ramping. This is this is like part of my favorite part of, of Luma Booth. Um, depending on like the song that the, the, the guest it selected, you can select when the song ramps up, when it slows down, um, normal speed. You know, touch picks kind of like hit and hold you to like just using, you know, it's slow, fast, slow or normal slow and then normal speed mm -hmm. this you can kind of tweak it however you want okay um and is the that, way you would do that is that why there's is, a little plus sign right here yep the way you do that is you would add new sections that you're going to edit the speed to okay so, so press, press the plus button here yep is there a maximum so now, so now it split your 10 seconds into five seconds and five seconds of slow-mo i see of, of 0.5 speed sure okay so so, so now I, if i go here right because this is the very beginning this is going to be the first one right mm -hmm. i go here and and i can manipulate the speed for this section for this first section by moving this here up or down right exactly okay. exactly so and one a speed of one would be normal. Anything above that would be fast, and then any be anything below that would be obviously slower. Okay, sweet. And then the, this is telling me that this section right here, so far, given the speed, it's going to be a total of ten seconds long. Uh, this thing. exactly. Okay. Yeah. Right. It, it, yeah. It's telling you how long that's going to be. Um. Right. So this, 
allows you to get that sweet spot where you get like you know your 22 to 25 seconds even longer you can get 30 second videos if you mess with this enough okay. um because obviously the the slow-mo kind of lengthens the video a little bit so this is where you would tweak that and mess with it and get you know get the spot that you want to get to okay so let so, me go ahead okay so this one is 10 this one's 10 seconds and if i move right over here to the second section and uh, let's say, for example, I just decide to speed it up by uh, a total to 1.5. Uh, that's going to be that video, for example. And then if I hit the plus yeah. section right here, I can even add a, more, a, a new section where I can either slow it down or speed it up or leave it at an, a normal speed as well, right? Uh, exactly. What, ha what settings are you happy with, Mondo, as far as your productions go? So I, like I said, I kind of tweak it according to whatever song I'm using. Oh, of course. Um, okay. So, I actually I, have I a question, Mondo. I, I, I should have brought this up earlier when you, because you did say something about the music slowing down and stuff like that, right? And then you brought up touch picks. I wanted to ask you, when changing the speed here, this also changes the speed of the track of the song? No. Oh, okay, okay, okay. No, no, no. So, I, that's just me, my musician brain, just automatically just tweaking the speed of, of the video to match the song um so that no extra things would need to be done afterwards let's just say if they just wanted to post it right away just as is it just gives it a little extra like um i guess i just get a little extra something that they don't have to adjust. so if i'm understanding you correctly you set it up to a point where the the speed the tempo is to the rhythm of the song like the beats per second or when the, the beat drops exactly. like that. okay that's exactly. awesome man very cool that's the musician side of you totally get it <laughs> yeah I, but I, you, like i said that's that's just a cool thing that you can tweak within Luma Booth mm -hmm. that I think everybody would benefit from, would enjoy, just because you kind of get to, let's just say you want to just do a completely slow-mo video. You can just do a slow-mo video if you wanted to mm -hmm. um, and just speed up at the beginning, at the end, or whatever you want to do. I like that customization of it. Okay. Um, that was always really, really cool because you can make it go super fast, a lot faster and a lot slower than you could with touch fix. Um, wow. But that's and in, right underneath this, and just in case you're questioning it, Let's just say you've already loaded your overlay and your song. I'm just skipping a step really quick. Okay. Let's just say you've already uh, um, uploaded your song and your overlay, mm -hmm. and you want to see how the speed ramping looks with the music and the overlay. This little preview section allows you to do that. All right, let's go ahead and hit preview. All right, this is the first uh, 10 seconds. By the way, if uh, you guys can see, it sh actually shows you 10 seconds at half the speed, mm -hmm. which is what we're seeing. So as soon as this hits 10, it's going to speed up, right? Yep. Now it should be speeded up now. Going to be doing the 10 seconds at a faster rate here. I don't know if it's lagging on your end or it's just your, the, the call is lagging. Yeah, it, it was lag. It's it's lagging uh, even on my end. So it picked up the, the faster speed. Uh, past the actual 10 seconds and I'll play that back. Maybe it'll do it correctly this time and This okay. length guys is a uh, 25 seconds long and that's actually a sweet spot I think anything over 21 seconds or so is, is a sweet spot uh, Just because I, I if you have yeah, if you have anywhere from three to four people on the platform I think it's great that it's in it, it, it falls between that sweet spot because that means that everyone on there will get that slow-mo part now what's really cool about this uh, Luma booth setting uh, out here Mondo is that because we have more control as directors when it comes to setting up these settings we can set it up where everyone gets spotlight on the booth because exactly. with, touch picks, with touch picks I think we both know that sometimes it'll spin and people everyone comes out but then it'll go through that slow-mo process where only like one or two people will really get to yeah. get that that slow cool uh, look yeah. right and you, and you better hope that one person is, is getting it too because it's like they, they may not be and it's like you, the yeah. whole rest of the video could be great and then you get to that one part and it's just like ah oh, yeah. like yeah i wish it was a little bit something else on that yeah okay sweet yeah all right well that's that let's continue scrolling down uh so for example i do have mp3 songs on my phone already so if i go okay. to soundtrack and i go to choose right here and i'll select uh this one right up here yep okay it's already on there boom it's done done you actually can select multiple songs and put it on there too wow which means that if i select another song it'll it, it'll, it'll just alternate 
Okay, so say for example, Mondo, this song, say for example, is 30 seconds long. I add another song that's 30 seconds long, but the total is only 20 seconds long up here. Does that mean that the system itself will split these songs 10 seconds and 10 seconds to match the, the 20 second length? Or how does that work? No, no. So it's going to alternate the songs um, per recording. Hmm. So one one guest will go up there, they'll get one song. The next guest that goes up there will get another song. Ah, like the, the, the DJ jukebox on the touch picks kind of thing. Exactly. This is already, it's already in there. Yeah, it's already Sweet. on there. Yeah. Hey guys, just uh, just if you guys are watching this video right now, just jumped on uh, for whatever reason. Mondo is really breaking this down in detail, and I'm loving the features on Luma Booth. Thank you, Mondo. Let's continue moving uh, on the way down here. Video overlay. Uh, it would be the same thing as matching the overlay size to the video we selected up here, which was um, where was it at? I think it was on the uh, go down a little bit right over here. Twelve. Twelve eighty. Yeah. yeah. So these are the dimensions that we want on Canva, Mondo. Yes. Okay, cool. So um, you actually wouldn't go to the video overlay section. I you won't. would go to the image overlay section. Okay, all right. So I would go here. Yeah, it was the weirdest thing when I was trying to, when I first started messing around, I'm like, why isn't my overlay I see. going on? And it was because I was in the wrong section. Okay, so if, for example, um, let's say I do have my overlay ready on Canva. I upload that onto my phone to match the size. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I would go not to video overlay, ladies and gentlemen, but image overlay. Image overlay. All right. And now, I, if I'm not if I'm not mistaken, I haven't done this yet, and this is something I actually am going to after it's called mess around with. I think the image or the video overlay is for live um, overlays. It's like for the um, what's the word I'm looking for? Animated overlays. Animated. I don't know why I couldn't think of the word animated overlays. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, I I have to confirm that. I actually just saw someone post about it, so mm -hmm. I'm, I want to confirm that before I, you know, tell everybody. Yeah, that's where you do it. But for right now, we'll just do image overlay. Yes, sir. And for the image overlay, I'm just because I'm just curious, right? You can alternate tracks if you put multiple tracks on here. If you put multiple overlays, will it be the same thing? Will it? Will it? Uh, will we get? I haven't tried that, David. I actually haven't tried it. Let's try it. Can you? Do you have overlays on you? That are that same not, that size. Uh, uh, this size, seven twenty by twelve eighty. I I do not. I do not. No, that's a good question. But this is going to be fun to, to to explore later. Uh, I'm trying yeah. to keep this video as concise but crammed with the right information that we're going to need as operators. But yeah, let's go ahead and, and just get a little um, curious. And later on, if you guys on your own time or, or Mondo, if you can come back later and revisit this part and maybe post a video because Mondo does have a YouTube channel. Uh, and his yep. uh, YouTube channel will be in the description box below. You guys can check that out. Cool. So let's keep moving down on uh, Mondo here where it says, uh, well, you, you're kind of, I'm kind of following your leading. So we're at the video section here now. Okay. So just before we go to the next section, uh, this, the before recording and after recording, that's obviously where you would put your intro and outro. Um, if you had one. Okay. Uh, that's where you would, that's where you would add it. Okay. Um, but yeah, we can go yeah. down. Um, this portion, we don't even need the video portion. Right. We don't even need to mess with because that's if you were just recording straight video without the boomerang uh, feature mm -hmm. or the slow mo feature. So you scroll down a little bit more. Okay. Okay. Uh, I thought it was another option. Uh, so just go to uh, the next menu, which would be background removal. All right. Um, we don't really, I mean, I don't know if you want to use this, but this is the feature basically to remove the backgrounds and you can add whatever picture you wanted in the background and have it show up in the, the video of the of the guests. No one's really mastered that aspect yet, so it always looks yeah. blurry or kind of off. Yeah, it looks weird. Up the rest yeah. of let's, let's exclude that for now. Um, yeah, it always looks really weird. That's why I, I, t I leave mine off, so that's why I wanted to bring that up, though. Just make sure at the top it's <laughs> off. It's gotcha. It usually is, but just to make sure, just check through your menus. So down at the bottom where it says effects. Okay. So this is the same thing. This is basically if you wanted to add a filter to the video, like make it like grayed out Sephora, um, you know, black and gray, whatever you want to do, you could do it here, but that's personal preference. These, uh, these effects right here, Mondo, are for the 360 booth videos, for the 360 booth operators, not just for photos. You could, you could add, yeah, that gray, that gray scale and stuff like that to, to the video as well. Oh. But um, okay. I don't. I haven't messed with it, so I don't know how good it actually is. Okay. Um, Another opportunity, if you guys want to explore that, um, 
Cool. All right. And then so on the right side, stickers, should I proceed on to the bottom yeah, here? Proceed. Yeah, proceed to stickers. All right. Just letting everybody know, just make sure all of these, these menus that we're going through now in this section, just make sure it's all turned off. You don't want anything else bogging down your videos, uploads. So yep. just make sure at the top it says that it's off. Got it. Very cool. So I'm going to go to uh, proceed with camera settings here. Yep. All right. There I am. Okay. So you do not have to um, mess with the, well, actually it's, uh, it's under photo and GIF. Um, that so tab, just make sure it's, yeah, switch over to video and boomerang. Mm -hmm. uh, I normally do not mess with the white balance or any of that stuff because I, I'm not knowledgeable on that, on that. And the videos come out, you know, nice the way they are sure so i wouldn't tweak the white balance mm -hmm. um just make sure under advanced okay that you're using your back ultra wide angle question mondo so for touch picks every time i use every time i was going to use the ultra wide it, it doesn't mm -hmm. give me that clear crisp crisp resolution when i do the ultra wide so for all of my videos what i usually use is just a wide angle versus the okay. ultra wide and that's how i get some of my videos to come out you know as far as quality goes really good because it's not yeah. really press and it's not maxing out the camera to a point where it's ultra wide and it's not using its primary camera just exactly. as a regular standard or wide angle um have you had the opportunity to really explore both the wide angle and the ultra wide and the same type of lighting I, I did and i did and i the one when i initially recorded it with just a regular wide angle um my production changed after that and i added new lighting so it it, it drastically changed it so i didn't uh, the difference was way too big for me to be able to say it, it was because of the wide angle or the ultra wide mm -hmm. um so that's why i just kept it at ultra wide because i actually liked seeing um i didn't see a, dif a difference in it hmm. basically because the, the lights were so different from when i first did it okay so, um, but just so you can, they can see the, the different options, obviously the same as, as touch picks. It's the, you know, the ultra wide, the back wide angle, the front wide angle. Yeah. So, and also, you do that, um, definitely guys, uh, for your phones, whether, uh, whatever model you're using, the newer the model, of course, the better because of the stabilizers. And we'll get to the stabilizing section here in a few seconds, but mm -hmm. the rear cameras, which you want to use, not, the, not your selfie camera. So either the wide angle or the ultra wide. Have fun exploring these two options. All right, and then so I'm gonna go ahead and, and scroll down to this section right here, Mondo Video Stabilization. Gonna go ahead and hit so that. The options so yeah, open. just make sure that's on on high. On high, all right. One thing, one thing I will uh, tell the users: um, just whenever you're using Luma Booth and your video, video, I think it has to do with the video stabilization within the app. Make sure that everything else is closed out that use and that could be why your your playback video the preview video was lagging because maybe because we had the video call on or maybe because other things are running in the background I, i'm not sure but i noticed that whenever other things are on and that video type stabilization is trying to stabilize the video in slow-mo it causes it to kind of drag a little bit mm -hmm. um so that that's a tip make sure all other apps are closed out when you go to use luma booth that's really good information. So making sure that our processor is going to give us is really going to work in an optimal way. Let's make sure that all of our third party apps before the event are closed. Uh, that way the phone can freely use the full processor to stabilize while using Luma Booth. That's what it sounds like, right, uh, Mondo? Yep, exactly. Okay, got it. All exactly. right. Okay, so we're done with this. Unless you wanted to adjust your zoom, I, I don't mess with it. It's pretty, it's pretty good. Um, you're getting 240 frames per second um, mm -hmm. with the zoom that it's at. Okay, that's perfect. Uh, so just so just go to print setup. Um, this you don't need because we don't have cameras. Our regular photo booth, we have a 360. Okay. So you go to email, SMS, uh -huh. tab. Okay, this is where if you were wanted to send the videos via email, you could you know tweak like mess with the message that it sends the user. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to. I kind of remove the email feature when I do it yeah. just because it save time. Mondo, is, is this the section where uh, for touch picks and for everyone else that, that's used touch picks, uh, usually what I'll do is because the events are late in the evening, I'll send that master uh, link to the master gallery the very next day in the morning. 
uh, through mm -hmm. an email. Now with, with Luma Booth, is there going to be a master link I can share with my client? Will they have access to the entire gallery? Is that is that going to be here under sharing uh, settings? No. Uh, well, yes, you would make sure that it's, it's turned on, but there's a separate web link that you would go to. I'll, I'll tell you guys about that once we get to that point. Okay. Um, that you would have to that that's what you would use to send to the the host or whoever wanted the 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 web link okay all right so next step mondo so uh, sharing so step or? yep so you would uh, you would go uh, you can scroll down to the sms if you wanted to adjust that as well too just to let everybody know you, you can change your message maybe plug your 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 google my business um page on there leave a review whatever you wanted to do you could do that there right here okay cool right. um so go to sharing settings yes sir Okay, um, so this is something I've learned. I don't know if this is uh, this was an issue with um, Luma Booth. I've learned I've learned that if the videos have not loaded to the server, like the the web server, like their web gallery, mm -hmm. the QR option doesn't come up right away. So if you're in an area that has really really bad service, mm -hmm. the QR option is not going to come up right away. It may take a little while before it comes up. Okay. I mean, we've had the, we've had a similar issue with touch fix as well. I think it's just that's just the nature of the, these kind of things, basically. Yeah. But I have noticed that when I turn off the QR code option and turn it back on, I didn't run into as many issues with the QR code showing up. So okay, that acts like as a refresher if, if you're having those. I think that's what it's doing. Okay, yeah, I think that's what it does. All right. Um, but it, since I do that, I go ahead and turn them all off and on. Mm -hmm. I turn Twitter off. Because you know, I got time for that. All right. <laughs> um, but you see how you turn the cloud sharing on, so that's how you would make sure that everything is going to that that gallery, that web gallery. Okay. So this web gallery says it says in sharing by album URL. So yep. I'll go ahead and, and and record a video here on the 360 booth. That video, uh, and then we'll take it from there because I'm sure there's going to be uh, some cool steps from that after uh, it yeah. finishes rendering if you can show me how to send that to a client whether they are an android user or a iphone user is that cool sure yep for sure all right so next thing Wanda, what should i be doing next so then you're going to scroll down uh this is where you would adjust the uh sharing time for like the uh, for your uh, sharing station so okay. however long you want the video to be playing for okay. and all that stuff you could you can adjust cool. that there you, do you leave it at 30 seconds yeah, I, I usually whatever, however long the video length is, uh -huh. I leave it for a few seconds longer than whatever the video is, just to okay. give them enough time to kind of step off and, and take a look. Very cool. Okay. Okay. And so the virtual attendant, that's more for regular photo booths. If you weren't, we have an actual attendant, not a virtual one. Okay. So just make sure it's turned off. Uh, go to survey at the bottom. Make sure that's turned off. Go to disclaimer. Make sure that's turned off, uh, and then you would launch your event. All right. It seemed very tedious because I talk a lot, and because there's a there's a lot of little things that you have to learn after you do it the first time. But okay. I promise, once you've done it like once or twice, yeah, you're you're good. And then uh, just to kind of go off of what you just mentioned, it seems tedious and it seems like a long process. But that's because we went the the route of where you would have to go through each and every section versus just going into the 360 booth boomerang, setting mm -hmm. up the settings and launching the event, right? Exactly. All right. Exactly. All right. Cool. So uh, let me go ahead and uh, place the phone on the on the 360 booth, right? Is that is that we're ready to is that something that yeah ready to do? Yeah, okay. Do. All right. Mm -hmm. Let me go ahead and stop sharing here. So given given its sense given its sensitivity, Mondo, if I move the phone a little too much right now, it'll start recording, right? Uh, I don't think we turned it on. The we, I don't think we turned that on. So, so put it on the booth and then press this button. Yeah, and it'll do the countdown. All right. Yeah. Me, I wish I can share this part with you guys, but um, maybe maybe I'll record it with another phone here. Let me see. Hey, we're getting we're getting all kinds of angles over here. Yeah. That's that's what we get. That's what we get over here. Yeah. All kinds of angles.
Now that the phone has been mounted onto the arm, of course, we're gonna be using this rear camera. This is how the display is going to be looking like. This button here, I believe once it's pressed. Oh, so with that did, Mondo, when I pressed that button, it started doing the countdown for me. Mm -hmm. uh, so if, if I swing the arm, it might trigger that motion sensor? No, so we, we, didn't, we didn't turn the motion sensor on. Okay. So if you turn the motion sensor on, yeah, you wouldn't have to push the, the, the button at all. It would okay. just automatically start the countdown itself. Got it. So what I'm going to do, ladies and gentlemen, is I'm going to go ahead and arm this here. Give me a five second countdown. I'm going to go ahead and step on the booth here. And it's probably going to be action time soon. Now I'm going to be on here for about 10 hey. seconds, right? Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> And it's a wrap. All right, let's go ahead and take a look at the screen here. Look at your boy. There it is. All right, sweet. So here's that section you were telling me about earlier, making sure that that's checked. That way this is accessible right through the actual exactly. screen. So yep. now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and press this video here. And that's, this is, I take it this is the entire gallery, Mondo? Yeah. Yeah, and you can also adjust, you know, the way this looks as well, too. Okay, so let me move this to the side and make sure you can see the entire screen. Okay, so, all right, Mondo, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the share icon right down here, and we can airdrop it, mm -hmm. and that's probably the feature you use the yep. most throughout your event, right? Yep. Yeah, and then for the uh, Android users, what do you recommend, um, Mondo? So... For them, because this is probably um, looks like it's going to take a sec for the QR code to show up. Um, I just I, t I usually text it to them, mm -hmm. um, and that is basic. That's the the only option I have found now to kind of resolve that issue. Mm -hmm. um, when you text it, I, I mean, I usually take my hotspot, but that not, you know how that work, works all the time. It doesn't really help not sometimes. Right, it's a hit and miss with the hotspot. When I sent this yeah. text message to them and they receive the text message, do they get a link to download this video and it'll be a version where it's clear? Because what's happened in the past is if you send, to, if you use TouchPix and you use the the text message, they'll get the video, but it'll be really terrible quality. The resolution got compressed and everything. So I have, I have made, because I'm actually, I'm an Android user and I, I but I bought an iPhone and iPad and everything for the business. Yeah. So I made sure to know both. I have an IT background too, so I made sure to understand both devices. And I know I made sure once I send it over to Android users, I follow up with them either right after the event as soon as they get it. Hey, can I? You know, do you mind if I take a look at the video? You know, how does it look? I I kind of question engage what it looks like and and their reaction to it, and it actually still looks really really good. Okay. Um. Now, do I think it could be nicer? Yes, 100%. I mean, and it's the case, it almost seems like it's the same case as whenever we post it on social media where it kind of compresses it a little bit. Mm -hmm. well, I don't know if you can see it on your end. Yeah, so I sent it as a text message just now. Um, I haven't received it on my other cell phone yet. And so if the QR code is working and they scan the QR code with their Android device, does the quality change from sending it as an SMS versus scanning the QR code? No. It does not. No, no, it's the same. It, it, it'll look just like if it got airdropped to them. Okay. Um, something too, I don't know if um, some people know this, but uh, for a lot of the, and especially the newer Android phones, um, like most of the time we're used to just telling them to like hold their phone up to the QR code and scan it mm -hmm. with their camera. Mm -hmm. But there's actually like an option within the Android, like you just turn it on it's, it's it's made to scan QR codes. Like, and it'll scan it instantly. Instead of like, you know, you're kind of like holding it up to the screen and it kind of takes a few seconds to kind of get it. This, this I guess, it makes the camera a little bit more sensitive to QR codes. Okay. Um, so if you run into an Android user and you see that they're having issues, I would uh, I advise them to like, just drop down to your, go to your menu and see if you have that option to scan QR code. Very, very cool. That's great information because it's basically a shortcut, right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. I'm trying to find you, Mondo, here that uh, you vanished here on me. I'm trying to look for your, uh, where are you, where'd you go? There you are. Here, bro. 
All right, I'm here, man. That, 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 uh, that, I think that wraps it up as far as the fundamentals and basics when it comes to Luma Booth. Uh, For sure. Is there anything that I probably didn't ask that you feel is, is, a, is something that arises as far as questions go when using Luma Booth? Uh, yes. So um, you're probably aware that there's a partner app to Luma Booth in order to share it. Um, it's called Luma Share. Luma Share. Okay. Um, that's another, like, it's like a, I think it's like $8, like seven ninety nine or seven. I, I don't remember the cost of it. So in total, that brings the cost of Luma Booth to $28. Mm, okay. Um, it works seamlessly. I mean, it's, it's a lot like touch picks. It works. It works very well. Um, don't run into really any issue. I have not run into any issues with it, you know, going over to the sharing station. Yeah. So um, so Luma Share guys uh, looks something like this. Am I correct, uh, Mondo? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. so all it is is uh like my like Mondo said it, it's in a, it's like a third party but it's like a partner app, right? And if yeah. you need to be, I, 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 Go ahead. Oh no, I was going to use this. Sorry. Go ahead. If you're using an iPad sharing station, you definitely need Luma Share. Is that is that correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. And so, guys, um, and then Mondo, please let me know if 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 this is accurate. If you guys set up your account using LumaShare and you set it up with a particular email, that email has to match that same um, email account you're going to be setting up LumaShare with. Is that also accurate? Yes. Yes, that's correct. Okay. All right. Sweet. That's correct. Um. Another thing about the the LumaShare um, partner app, just make sure that your both devices are on the same network and that the network that they are both on um, do not block um, two devices talking to each other because that's a, an issue that people will run into. Mm -hmm. um, and if that ever happens, just turn on your hotspot, link them both to your hotspot instead of the venue's Wi-Fi. Um, that is that's something that usually comes up when it comes to like the luma share aspect but yep. besides that it's pretty smooth you know getting the videos over and stuff okay and then lastly mondo so say for example i'm done with my event on the phone that we generated together the event's complete mm -hmm. i know for touch picks you have to go in there and you have to close the event uh mm -hmm. how do i close the event or complete the event on luma booth so on Luma Booth, you would do, let me go to here, and then, oh, where's that? Let me close that really quick, sorry. Of course, of course. So if you needed to close the event, you would go to the, you would select the event itself. And then where you would, I keep hitting the wrong option. You would think I would already know this by now. No worries, man. <laughs> no problem here. So you would go to, where is that option? Because I've left my events open before. Actually, I have two of them open still. <laughs> okay. Because I, I never really have to close them out. <laughs> okay. It's, it's, I, I think it's in that drop down right there. All right. So. So, so it's uh, obviously it's not the same as TouchPix. So, uh, even, no. even without going in here and somehow manually, you know, closing this event, I I'm ready to send the link out to the client. Mondo, the link that contains yes, the entire gallery. How do I do that, sir? So you would go to Photo Share. So F O T O S H A R E dot C O. Okay. So, all right. Let me let me share my screen yeah i'm gonna take you with me really quick i gotta get my phone charger okay and i'll go be i'm gonna log into photo share here all right ladies and gentlemen i am here uh photo share this is the email address i used for my luma booth and of course i have my password in there let me sign in And these are some, okay, so these, this is the latest video I did with Mondo here today. So this yep. video right here, Mondo, I would click on these three buttons here. Yep. And then shares. Yep. Well, this actually, that shares is to, it gives you more of the analytics of what's been sent out, what hasn't been sent out. 
Okay. So if you wanted to, let me actually go to it on my end as well, so I can okay. tell you exactly where to go. If you go to the left hand side, so click on that picture and on the the one that we just recorded. Sure. On the left hand side, it gives you the option to do the download link. You see it on the left hand side. Left hand side download link right here. Yep. So go ahead and select. Uh, it says allow guests to download entire album. So it it doesn't allow me, and that's probably because I haven't upgraded to uh, the PhotoShare. Maybe because I'm not. Oh, possibly. Oh, okay. Yeah, possibly. Okay. But it would give you that option to do that there. Okay. Um, underneath it, you would see it. There's a like just a little share link. Okay. That you could just send to them to the guest. Sweet, Mondo. We've been uh, rocking it for almost an entire hour. I know you got to get back to your world, um, but I just want to take a moment to say everything that you introduced us to and really expanded on. I highly appreciate it. I know that you are in a business to, you know, help people, and I think that this video is really going to help a lot of people because there's a lot of people starting businesses as far as the 360 booth industry goes, and you know they're on a budget. I was on a budget, and spending fifty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars per app it is expensive. And from what I understand, Luma booth is about twenty dollars, right, a month? Yeah, yeah. Oh, well, with Luma Share, it'll be twenty-eight. Yes. Yeah, twenty-eight dollars total a month, and you have access to all of these tools and this type of production. And you've been using it for a while, so I feel like this is really going to help a lot of people as far as their budget goes as well. Just because no one, uh, there's people in other countries that don't have, you know, those extra fifty dollars a week just to, yeah. you know, yeah. consider themselves uh, operators and and have that business going. So yeah, I, I want, I really want to thank you, Mondo, for everything that you did today, and I also want to thank you for being such a active member on the Facebook community. You know, I, I um, see you pop up all the time, and I'm very grateful for you know you just being that individual. And I just want to say thank you, man. I, I really want to take the time to, you know, give you recognition and acknowledge the effort that you put in and the knowledge that you share with everyone. So thank you so much. And guys, please uh, show your support. Follow Mondo. All of his information, as I mentioned earlier, is going to be in the link description below. Uh, and I'm sure, like Mano said, we're going to get a lot of questions and we're going to tackle those. And if we get one question in particular, maybe we'll group those together and do another collaboration because I really enjoy Mondo's energy and his knowledge. And he's been in the industry for a while, too, and he's passionate about it. So I'd love to do another collaboration soon with you, Mondo. Same, for sure. sure. I, I mean, I love it. And I tell people all the time, if, like within the group, if you're starting this business and you haven't at least watched 90% of David's videos, you don't have like a fraction of the knowledge that you'll need to, to just, you know, be able to survive doing this because I want people to want to do this. Like I want there to be a standard. I want everyone to be knowledgeable on everything, every aspect of what we do. Um, because yes, we provide a service, but we also, we can make or break an event. We can make someone's entire night you know yeah. um and we're also we're, we're kind of teachers we're teaching people about something that they just rented they just purchased and they weren't even knowledgeable on you want that experience to be a one like you want it to be top notch you want to come off as very knowledgeable and professional and that's kind of why i want everyone to succeed i want everyone to do well to look good um if i don't know it i'll find out i like I love everything, everyone in the, in the global booth family, shout out to the 360 boys. Those are my homies. Um, it, it's just, it, it's been, I love that you, that you started that group and that you push out content all the time. People need to watch your stuff. <laughs> they need to, um, it's not just yours. There's, you know, there's, there's other videos out there, but be like, just try to educate yourself as much as possible. Yeah, as far as your YouTube channel, Mondo, uh, what what type of content are you expecting to uh, put out there? I'm I'm just curious because I know it's always healthy and it's it's very strategic to have some of your events posted with the proper mm -hmm. links in the description. But do you find uh, room in your life to make some tutorial videos like this and and uh, elaborate in certain aspects of the business? Uh, yes, actually, that's that's my goal. I, I was actually. I'm kind of getting to that point where everything's kind of ramped up and um, I was actually going to try to use this video and the fact that, you know, a lot of people weren't very knowledgeable on Luma booth 
as a you know jumping off point to kind of say you know maybe i can start here educate everyone and we all have our different experiences with this industry mm-hmm. and i guess whatever little bit of knowledge i can share with somebody that'd be cool i'd like that yeah definitely let's use this uh this 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 video to catapult and, and get a lot of uh people that are hungry for knowledge onto your channel so yeah i look forward to you growing your channel and sharing some of those videos with me and just uh let's continue to collaborate brother but for now it's going to be sure. a temporary goodbye and it was a pleasure to work with you today mondo same man same i love it man yeah. keep it coming dude yes sir take care you too bud all right mondo Peace. bye